اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ان الدین عند اللہ الاسلام صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح صدری و یسر لی امری وحل العقدت من لسان یفقہ قولی Respected viewers and listeners, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi s-sameel alimi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim in hamzihi wa nafkhihi wa nafsihi. A'udhu bi kalimati lahib thammah min kulli shaytani wa hamma wa min kulli ha'ilin lammah. A'udhu bi kalimati lahib thammati min sharri ma khalaq. Rabbi a'udhu bika min hamazati shayatini wa a'udhu bika rabbi an yahdun. فالله خير حافظا وهو أرحم الراحمين آمين يا رب العالمين حسبي الله ونعم الوكيل قدر الله وما شاء فعاله فبأي آلاء ربكما تكذبان وقل الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا the ayah which I have read is from Surah Ali Imran, the family of Imran, chapter 3, verse number 19. The cornerstone. In the dina in the light Islam. The deen which will be accepted in the sight of Allah on the day of judgment will be Islam. My dear viewers and listeners, Today the topic is very complex. The students who are aware of the contemporary histories, terminologies, might it will be easy for them. But general public, technical people, it might be difficult for them to follow. But the reason why I am making this lecture that as a Muslim, we ought to know these historical events happened within 100 years. Because the people who do not learn from the history, they are destined to be doomed. So that is why we have to see what really happened within 100 years. And this is what I'm going to take you first. You have to understand why I have quoted the ayah. In the dina in the lahi islam. Some critics might take exception to this that why Islam is the only religion to be true. Because Islam means that total submission to the Creator, Muslim, a person who just give all his will to the will of Allah. That whatever Allah decrees, you have to say yes. So that is a Muslim. And the system which gives you all these ordinance or the rules and the regulations, legislation, should be from the divine authority, revealed knowledge from the creator, absolute power. And that is the Quran. So that is why Islam is this, the only religion which will be accepted. True form, no alteration, no concoctions, no interpolations, pure divine knowledge. So this is the point about that. Now, as a dictionary point of view. You see in dictionaries they talk and they say that Islam is a religion. Actually Islam is not the religion. It's not a religion. Islam is a system. Total social, political, economic system lumped up in one ideology to be practically implemented not talking, no generalization statements. It is the religion which has a tendency, a potential to implement physical nature and spiritual nature. 
So if you see dictionary like Britannica or Merriam-Webster or all the dictionaries in the world, they say Islam is one of the religions. This is not true. Basically, the Western system does not have any word to describe Islam in a noun, <clears throat> either as a gerund noun or a normal noun. They can't explain. They don't have the word. So Allah says, in the Dina in the Islam. <clears throat> now, the system, it also has political laws. Social laws, economical laws. When you all collect these things together, that is Islam. All the other religions are called or could be called religions. We have no exception for that. I'm not the you know authority to speak on their on their behalf or about them. That's their headache. If Christian has no objection calling himself a religion. We have no issues with that. But Islam, please don't call us religion. It's a way of life. So the right word for Islam could be made a compound noun with the hyphen way of life and make it consider it as a one noun. But religion does not fit. Now what is a religion? Religion has only the aspects of rites and rituals. Islam is par excellence. Islam is way above all these kind of grades. Islam also has spiritual stuff or related to rather, would you call it rites and rituals, but Islam also had the system of social, political and economic. These other religions don't have, can Christianity solve the issues of economical system? No. Can Judaism, can Buddhism do it? None. The only religion on the surface of this earth which has a potential power within and kinetic power within which can tell you the rest of the world to bring your problems, bring your problems and Quran will supply the answer. But sometimes because of the arrogant nature of a human being, in chapter 18, chapter 17, Allah says in chapter 17, verse number 89, the problem with the people is that all the problems, the, the problems to their solutions are provided in Quran. But the problem is the bulk of the majority, they are puffed up with pride, prejudices die hard, they are prejudiced, biased, they don't want to listen. So that is why for 300 years humanity is seeking for social justice from east to west and west to east. They couldn't have it. So this is the definition of Islam is the system. Clear? Let's move. Today the topic is about economics. Islamic perspective of economics in comparison with communism, brackets, socialism and capitalism. Before going into that, I would like to share some historical background, how these all things started. You see, humanity has a nature, sorry, has a tendency or instinct by applying the best possible results of economics. Before people were nomads, they keep moving from here to there. But when the first civilization started, we can say maybe uh, Mesopotamia, then people start realizing that we have to have a proper economic system. Without that, we cannot handle things. Arithmetics born, calculations of basics, mathematics, many other things came into invention. The system started from invaluable products, non-renewable resources like gold and silver. They produce coins as an intrinsic value of a product. 
How you gonna fix that thing from the product point of view through the PRP performance related pay? It will be counted and the cost is produced. Now, whatsoever the earnings goes to the employee, he will take it from the employer on and on. So different kind of ideologies came from the different period of time. But the question is there that whose ideology was the optimal? Not everything can be correct. One thing must be on the optimum way, optimal way. And what was it? It was the blueprint which was given by Umar ibn al-Khattab Islam is not talking. Islam provided the system. The system which was needed by Napoleon Bonaparte. The system which was needed in the search for Joseph Stalin. Karl Marx, Frederick Engels, Adam Smith, and those Rothschild giants. Blueprint was there. Who gave it? Umar ibn al-Khattab anhu, in the, with the true spirit of Islam. But these people manipulated it for their means. You see, as we have a saying, the laws are made to be broken or meant to be broken. This is all. You have to have a better system to manipulate. If there is no system is laid down, then how would you manipulate? They took unfair advantage from the Muslim lands. I'm not going to go into detail. And they took the system of business, the system of capitalism, capital, entrepreneurs, intrapreneurs. And then they said, Let, let's do something. So they have to have one global system to implement these kind of things, but you cannot achieve from the unrenewable, sorry, non-renewable resources or invaluable resource like gold and silver. So you must find another way to make these people enslaved by you. Paper currency. I'm going to start now my topic from 1600 from Frankfurt, Frankfurt, Germany. Rothschild family, they took the gold of the people and gave them the promissory notes as a shape of a dollar bill today, you can call it, or any currency in those days. And like a covenant or like an agreement that please give us this gold and we will give you equivalent amount of paper currency as an intrinsic value of your gold. After that, they saw these opportunities to control the system through one unit, banks. Banking system came into existence. Policies were there. Calculations or arithmetics were there. But you need to manipulate to get the evil gains out of it. To mint some money. So they stashed gold. They stashed gold from all around the people, from all over the world, wherever they can be from Europe, Europa. And from there, they took unfair advantage. And after that, of course, you know, people went, generations gone. Nobody knows who took from who promissory note, who gonna go follow and catch up. No time for this. So let's make the system that Paper currency is the primary source of buying and selling or trade. Done. Agreed upon all those capitalistic societies, especially the giants of capitalists or these people. Now, this is the beginning because I cannot go into the big back of the history. I have to start from, from somewhere. So I started from here. History started. Rothschild family, Jewish people, wise people, no doubt. Ghulam and Alima, the children of knowledge, intellectual people, no doubt. We agree on that. But intellectual people does not mean that they are the winners of the world. Intellectualism is related to the materialistic world, which is now we are living in it. Physical sciences, not metaphysical sources. So, 
there they started it. Now I have to educate you, otherwise I'm not. I'm failing on my duty. What is the meaning of capitalism? Please understand. Capital in English means money. Simple. The sources of money or anything which you have a source of money. Capitalism means money. But when you say sorry, capital. But when you say capitalism, it is a political terminology used for economics. You have to understand these things. Capitalism, democracy. Democracy means like when the people get together and they vote for someone. This is quite a different thing. But Western democracy is a different thing. Please try to understand. And the supreme source of all these, you know, command of chains coming from atheistic and agnostic point of views. Karl Marx and Frederick Engels. Das Kapital, which was written in Germany, maybe I think so, if I'm not wrong, Frankfurt. And the revolution came on the other part of the North Russia. This is, I'm gonna come into that, which changed the communism. Now Das Kapital, it was in response to the book of this capitalism written by Adam Smith. This is now conflict I'm going to discuss and how this conflict killed millions of people. Cold War, World War II, one, all they are electric connected somehow due to economics. So what happened? First, sorry, first understand the terminology is important for the people who do not know democracy and Western democracies are quite different. Western democracy is a political ideology. Democracy is a terminology. Clear? Now what is communism? Communism is a kind of a belief and a political economics ideology where you have the system, one party dictatorship, one political point of view, no rights or free of association to speak and express. So they created the community of council, Soviet Union. Union means people are getting together and Soviet means council, people of council. They created it. Which you can call it USSR before the Russia divided from before Soviet war. So this is a kind of ideology where the difference, major difference from capitalistic society by Adam Smith was that communists believed that there should be no free trade or open market system. Absolute authority is, should be given to the communist party, the people who are just elected for a particular selection of like few selected people, they will be keep ruling you. There is no competition. There is no promotion. You are there, you are there, that's it. If you are anointed for some per, 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 for some place and position, you will be there sticking there forever. And this was a problem in Islamic capital system, Islamic system, which I will come at the end, inshallah. I will tell you and I will tell you the solution what Islamic economic system is to the Western world so you can see where the truth lies and where the, where the better solution or the optimal solution is for economics. But at the end, inshallah, not now. So this communism, basically communism changed into one part which you call socialism, meaning to get interaction and get socialized. I'm not going into that. We're going to discuss a political through economics. You have to understand that sometimes politics and economics are intertwined or linked together together because you cannot separate them. They're inseparable. But you have to point one part out of it, which is economics. And of course, politics are used to make economics of the country. So this is the point now. Communism, capitalism. Books were written, ideologies were developed. Number one. Capitalism was something developed by Adam Smith, and I'm, I'm not, I, I'm, I mean, I don't want to go into detail of that, 
because right now we are living under a capitalistic society. So most of the people, they are aware and acknowledge of this society, capitalistic, where you have free market competition, where you have private ownership, you can have private sector, you work whatever you want to work, free competition, which is very near to Islam, Islamic economic system. But there is a difference, which I'm going to explain. There's a difference, which I will discuss at the end. So let's put this aside. But Adam Smith's work of capitalism or money, money system, monetary system was not actually, what I'm going to say like about Islamic as it is, but still some of the fundamentals were intact and compatible. Problem came, which the people, bulk of the people do not know. It was communism. Some of the points, the key points in communism were very good. But the problem is, ultimate result was a failure. When you have no rights of association, when you do not have anything, no promotion, the biggest factor is that you are not motivated anymore. There's no motivational force which put you and to drag you to do something. So that was the downfall of that era, communism. So how are we going to start? Das Kapital, written by Frederick and Karl Marx on the basis of total atheism. They don't believe in any people. So see, once you do not believe any religion, you're an animal brute. Allah says in the Quran, Surah Al-Hashr, Allah says, when you forget my warning, I will make you forget your own selves. So you act like a brute or animal. And you will find that. How much, you know, brutalities, atrocities Joseph Stalin did. His name was Joseph Stalin, meaning the man of steel. He called himself a man of steel. Very wise intellectual person. But he was not considered intellectual among his personal counsel. And the leader, the most important key figures was who? Vladimir, Vladimir Lenin. Lenin was the person, a Bolshevik party who got a power in Russia. And Joseph Stalin was a person, you know, where you're like, like, a, like a criminal record person. And before the Russian, before the, this uh, Vladimir Lenin came into power, those people were ruling Russia. There was a complete family of Russia. Uh, those people were ruling Russia before these people came. And those were not like in the detail that what exactly those were doing as economic, economical point of view. But of course, the influence of those capitalistic society was there through Europe, Frankfurt, from Rothschild family from Europe in 16th century came. Later to the people, people and people and people on and on. So this, this uh, czars, the Russian rulers before the, this uh, Bolshevik party member, when they created a party and, and made agitation against the economic system, the leader was Vladimir Lenin. And Vladimir Lenin, he was having a very important figure as his assistant, Leon Trotsky. I'm sure I'm pronouncing their na names correctly, but these are proper nouns, please don't try to find my mistakes. Leon, I think so, Trotsky, something like that. And he was his assistant. Now, Joseph Stalin, from his childhood, he was having so many problems like maybe uprising problem about like in childhood, maybe he was, uh, you know, humiliated or maybe bullied. Uh, he was a traumatic person. So many traumas in his life. And you know that when you are being bullied or if you are a bullied child, you know, you, things will not go well all your future all along. So this person, when while he grew, when while he grew, he was from Georgia. Not from Russia, not from Moscow. He was from Georgia, from a small town. And he was always in the eager to topple down the Tsar's rulers. Tsar's T-S-A-R, T silent. Tsar are the ruler of Russia before these people came in. 
And this guy want, always wanted to have an opportunity. So there was a party Bolshevik and Menshevik. And I think so, Vladimir Lenin belonged to well, uh, this guy. And they were having very brutal kind of ideologies. So Joseph Stalin met him as a, as a role model. He was his mentor. And then he met him and he became his protege. And they started a relation. But when he grew up, the matters, he went to jail and came back. When after Tsars, you know, the, the power was toppled down, Vladimir Lenin became the ruler of the nation and they call it Soviet Union Council in Russia. Frankfurt, the book Das Kapital by Karl Marx and Frederick Engels created a great impact on Russia that this communist system is the best system. There's no other system beside that. And it was, you know, and it created a loggerhead between the Soviets and America across the Atlantic Ocean when they came to know all those propensities, problem started. So, they invited Joseph Stalin to be the part of the member and he was one of the very finest close members of this party. This, for the problem with Joseph Stalin was, he was being ignored in the party. Vladimir Lenin took him as a good person, as, as his close associate. But the problem is Leon Trotsky, he didn't pay attention to him. And Joseph Stalin remembered all these things. And he was waiting for the right opportunity to take revenge from this person, Leon Trotsky. After the death of Vladimir Lenin, Joseph Stalin became the supreme leader of the Soviet Union. And there he took all those revenges, especially from Leon Trotsky, because when Leon was in the member, he did not appreciate Joseph Stalin because he said to Vladimir Lenin that Joseph Stalin is not an intellectual person and didn't pay attention. And Joseph was not the person who just forget things like that. He took the revenge. And because of that, they, he put him as a, you know, I don't want to go into detail. He put him on the charge of something treason or something he had to flee from Russia. And he went to Mexico and over there he was assassinated. Who assassinated him? Nobody knows. So this was the story of Leon Trotsky. So now, Joseph Stalin got the opportunity for the big opportunity of implementing the inspiration of Das Kapital, which is what was communism. And this was the alarming proportion or alarming issue for the Western countries. Why? After the World War II, in 1945, the problem of Germany was gone after the death of Hitler. Joseph Stalin didn't like Hitler. Joseph Stalin was the student of Lenin, Vladimir Lenin, and Hitler was on the different grounds because the problem with Hitler was he was also aspiring to conquer the whole Europe and Russia. Joseph Stalin was also inspiring to you know, to uh, aspiring to conquer the whole Europe. So the clash of powers came and America has to intervene. America had to because there was no other option left. After the Germany, after the World War II, some of the countries like Poland and all the countries which got freedom, freedom from, uh, from the nation they were ruling, they were not the slave nations anymore, but they were called satellite nations. Satellite nation is a nation which is controlled by you, like not directly controlled by someone, but somehow due to some reason, maybe, you know, on the back of the stuff, all the controls are given by, all the controlling is happening by them. So you are just like a state, a satellite, like a satellite revolving around a planet. So they were the satellite nations. Slowly and slowly, they were getting freedom, freedom, freedom after World War II. 
And then the altercation started. The problem started. To whom these countries they belong to? So there was a meeting, Yalta meeting, Yalta conference in Yalta around 1940s or early 50s. Don't ask me the dates, you can search yourself. And in Yalta conference, they were deciding what to do about this Germany. What is the future for Germany? America and, and yeah, people who were in Yalta conference was Winston Churchill from UK as a representative and Roosevelt from America before Truman and Joseph Stalin was there and all these three but this conference didn't produce any result because America was talking about democracy to be implemented Joseph Stalin also wanted the same but the problem happened Joseph Stalin's democracy was not what America was thinking and this is Truman doctrine prove it when they came to know later that this is not the case what you are talking about America, American democracy, that's why I told you in the beginning, political has, politics always has a democracy, as a political point of view also has economics in it. American Western democracy is based on the grounds of capitalism. And Joseph Stalin wants the democracy on the grounds of communism. That was the problem. So altercation happened. This problem came. And now what's the solution? Both are trying to attack one another somehow. So Yalta conference went without any purpose, without any, any results. Then later on, the things were escalated in the Truman a conference. When the second conference happened, over there, it was very clear for Americans to think that Joseph Stalin wanted to conquer what Eastern Europe, which he did. All the Eastern Europe was under the control of Soviet. And from Germany to the western half of the Germany to the west side was controlled by American influence. So they wanted to give money and money and most, so many things happened. Let me cut the long story short. This Berlin blockade implemented by Joseph Stalin, the capital of Berlin, that no, nothing will be crossed over. So the Berlin was the capital and Berlin was blocked by the Eastern sources. So nothing will be beneficial for the Western, Western Ber, Ber, uh, this, uh, Berlin and Germany, Western Germany, all along with the Western European countries. So America had to do airlifting. They sent many helping aids and all that's a Marshall plan, they call it Marshall aid plan. And Soviet and this guy, Joseph Stalin knew that the martial aid is basically is the buying and the power to dominate the American dollar bill. And this is what I always said that it was a power of domination about economics. So Joseph Stalin was somehow correct. America is intervening to put his world global agenda, new world order, and you have faced it now and you know it. All the currencies are supported by American dollar. And this Joseph Stalin knew it. This Marshall Plan is made the dominance of American dollar and American people or American nation to the Eastern Europe, to the Western Europe, because the aid was given to do and some of the Eastern Europe too. But Joseph Stalin was standing there and he did not let it happen. So these things were happening, fighting for communism and capitalism on what grounds? The grounds of power that our system must be there, this and our system must be there, and both system got failed. Why? Communism, communist system, what is there? The, the, the end result was famine in Russia. They got famine. And all those blocking and all those things, you know, this Iron Curtain speech by Winston Churchill, that he said there is a curtain between the Western and the Eastern Europe, which is Joseph Stalin's purity. Joseph Stalin wanted all this upper lower part of Europe to be the Soviet, including Turkey. And the other side, on the right side, they wanted to control all the Western, France, Italy, that it could, should be under the American influence. And they were fighting. And either you want to call it fortunately or unfortunately, America won. They got them beat, beaten down. So after the death of Joseph Stalin, the influence of communists was just left between you know, China 
And there was also Korean War, North Korea, South Korea, you know that what happened, also America intervened. And you know, somehow they protected the influence of communism towards the South Korea. And North Korea was uh, came into that and China intervened and somehow the, the, the situation didn't go well. So they produces the lines of equator lines and now the North and South are divided. So some has a communist influential influence left and others are gone. What remains at the end? The reason what I'm telling you all this, not to show that about the knowledge and all those words, to show you that this is the history which got millions of people died and killed on the grounds of social injustices. Do we know this, being Muslims? How many people were killed because of this capitalism, communism? When we were having Islamic system, we never spoke. They never studied. Bonaparte, he said that we need a woman to provide social justice in the West and the East. We don't know, we didn't really. Jab when Obedullah Sindhi met Leon Trotsky and when Obedullah Sindhi taught him, told him all about the economic system of Islam from Umar ibn Khattab, he asked him, replied to him, why didn't you implement why didn't you implement, we kill so many people because of these nonsensical ideas, what should we do, what should we not be doing? You had the idea, why didn't you implement even in the small portion of the world, so we can learn from you as a model, as a demo. And Abadullah Sindhi, you know, Sindhi Rahmatullah put his head down in shame and accepted that we lose it, we lost it. We should, we were the torch bearers, but we failed in that, we couldn't do anything. We were busy in our own rat race and all problems. What is the system now? What system should we go for? Communist system is not compatible, with, compatible at all with Islam. So somehow it was better in the Soviet war, even Pakistan, Afghanistan intervened and Alhamdulillah Allah protected us from those communistic ideologies which was coming from Russia and Russia was divided USSR Amal, uh, this uh, whole of the nation was amalgamated instead of balkanized. Sorry, it was balkanized instead of amalgamated and balkanized small, small states, so Yugoslavia and all those small, small states, Bosnia were the part of it and now they are independent states. They are no more satellite states. But where is the problem, guys? The system and the solution is only if we have a capitalistic society, but internal and external management in controlled situation that is the islamic system if you want to have a capitalistic society then you must provide a system which is based on internal and external controlled capital management what's the problem with the western democratic system of capitalism there is no control there's no auditing there's no transparency you cannot have a system which is opaque or translucent. You must have a transparent system. And this is what Islam made it. All the capitalistic values, but in a control system. 2.5 ratio of zakat will be implemented on the people who have the possession of 85 grams of gold per annum per lunar calendar as a saving system. You will not, if you are not doing these things, you are not obliged to pay zakat, it will be taken by force, 2.5%. From your 85 grams of gold equivalent, either it's intrinsic value of currency, paper currency, gold or whatever. Gold, silver, liquid businesses and cash, you have to pay. In Western democracy, there is no system, take the tax, do whatever you want to do. There is no auditing, keep increasing of debt, no system, all the system usually. Interest, all is destroying, and you know, trillions of dollars. The Western countries are under the debt of Jewish bankers, Federal Reserve Bank. Why? Because they have the system of capitalism which is not controlled. Islam system, per Islamic system, provides you. One button on the shirt of Umar ibn Khattab was inquired by a normal Bedouin. That is the system of Islam. When Islam will come, all the capitalism will be controlled internally and externally and then you will see everything will be coming into the order. 